Okay, we are back, and and while the Reverend Doctor William J. Eisenman is having partaking in his gastronomic delight called lunch, I have the one and only our official commercial voiceover artist for Mega Life Twenty One and Progressive Discussions, William H. Morrow the Third. William, how are you doing this week? I'm all right, Jimmy. How are you, bud? Good, good. Not bad. Uh, uh, we were uh, discussing different interesting subjects, but um, uh, I know you have something to say in regards to the foundation of our organization, the Backbone Newsletter Censored. I do. Uh, uh, to all your listeners, let them know the best way to join your organization is to go to www.newslettercensored.com and get your free annual subscription with your gift to support this work. We're living in that times, people, so you need newsletter censored. Okay, so call, call, or use your computer and get, find out all about it. It's just wonderful, please. Yes, new, newsletter, right, Jimmy, I'm back. newslettercensored.com is the best way to join and be a part of our organization. Since 1977, newsletter censored. There you go. Okay, now, um, I know you had an article, um, you couldn't be with us last last week, but you had a, 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 an article or, or more articles uh, to read. Uh, one of them was about Henry Ford, I believe. Well, yeah, I don't want to read it because it is a long article, but it was Henry Ford's not the automobile. The was traffic. Uh, old, invented the assembly line, Henry Ford made it better and more affordable where the everyday man could afford an automobile. The more automobiles, the more people could get around. This led to, well, as we discussed this week, you go to a Burger King, McDonald's, any Joe Blow restaurant, any deli, whatever you go to, now you can get to them. In the old days, you could only go locally where you could walk or take your, or your horse or your buggy or what have you to get to. Now, this led to a whole new chain of businesses, a whole world of businesses. And he created the traffic, the affordable to everyone. Right. And it was an amazing, it's an amazing story what he did. But people think he invented the automobile. No, he did not. No, he did not. He did not invent the automobile. He did not invent the assembly line. He made it more efficient, more affordable. And when the masses can have, then they can go elsewhere, travel further. Now, I mean, the, in the old days, if there was a, let's see, a McDonald's or whatever you would have four or five miles away, that, that is a height. Now if you have a car, now you can get there. Right. Now it creates highways. You didn't have highways. So the masses now had different ways of getting around now. People could drive all around the world and cross country, cross their country, any country. Yeah, you have, uh, uh, when the motor vehicle, the forever. when the motor vehicle became affordable, right. Uh, at that time it really was affordable. More of the wealth. It was more. Okay. It, it, well, yeah. People in those days, people usually paid cash for their automobiles, so well, to sure speak. Didn't have credit cards. That industry wasn't available. Yet. Yeah, yeah. So it was affordable. You know, I, I guess check or cash. You said. And and therefore the traffic began because of this. Now, what I like about Henry Ford is that he felt that it was very important for his employees to be able to afford to own and drive a Ford car. That's what he wanted. He wanted every, every of, well, I'm not gonna repeat what you said is right. Every employee of this should be able to afford a Ford, a Model P, you have you. Yeah, you know? which, is, which is far different from the attitudes of, of CEOs today, which is all about, they don't give a shit about their employees or they don't even have respect for their for their customers anymore i mean they're constantly no, well, that's true but it's not true it's true billy some, do, some don't they cut corners they they just want to cut corners they but you, uh, you have some some that don't cut corners too less. there's you have, you have both you have a and, uh, so as we as we discussed many times short term versus long term well there's planned obsolescence in american made products well here's an article let me give you a quick extra from Ford. Until they came along, automobiles were the toys of the rich. Prices fit only for the luxury market. Ford's idea of selling a low-cost 
no frills, a medical card, or an automobile travel to the common man. Putting independent transportation with the reach of farmers, storekeepers, and especially the men who made the cars. You see what I mean? Well, he... It was like Ford back then, William Gates today, the electronics. He well, conquered communication, Ford conquered personal mobility. Yeah, I know, but if, I, if you read this, the story, the stories about how they got to where they they got, like Bill Gates and, and Steve Jobs and all these other people, there's a lot of underhanded tactics with modern day... There's, uh, there's a lot of under... You're right, and be more importantly, luck. A lot of luck. Them through a break. And, and, and what about uh, stealing? Admits that we had nothing. Off. And what about stealing ideas from other programmers and not well, giving and not giving them credit for their for their inventions and ideas? Well, that too. You've got that going on Facebook, where those two twin brothers claim they invented it. What the Koch brothers? I think that's their name. I'm not sure. No, but they claim they invented it. I mean, yeah, they settled for it. I think it sound weird, but a few billion bucks. A lot more billions had they got yeah. the full credit or whatever. Well, Bill Gates um, was famous for stealing inventions and ideas from other other people, other programmers. Well, that's within in any industry, any business. There's even thought and belief. Now, he, stole he's sleazy. A lot I have to disagree. You know. He's he's a real. He's sleazier than you think, Bill. Just a lot of them are. Let's be honest. Remember the days of the wild, so-called wild west. Time store novels. They made some of these gunslingers bigger than they really were. Yeah. So anything can be built bigger by the so-called press. Now, now he's not rich enough. Now he's into uh, uh, spreading vaccines worldwide, which are harmful. Uh, you know, greed, greed doesn't end. It goes on and on and on. It, it doesn't seem to end. It's, it's sad. And, uh, you see so many. Well, not so many, but quite a few flourishing, doing well. But of all of these children dying daily in these third world countries because something like, I'm not trying to put a soft light on it, but a simple thing such as poor water, they don't have filtration systems. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. That's true, you know, they don't have the, uh, the basic so things they should have. have. Good, clean water, sewage. Right, well then you have... then important to the human being. That, right, then you have an evil son of a bitch like the... Uh, the scumbag, the CEO of Nestle Corporation, who wants to control the world's drinking water and says that people do not have a right to drinking water. Well, that's just like saying that people don't have a right to life. Exactly. Might as well say that. Uh, every human being has a right to life. Don't of course. Don't say they don't have a right to drinking water. This is wrong. That's, that's yeah. like the lifeblood of a human. Being. Well, people need yeah. water. It's not simple. People need food. They need water. Yeah. Uh, primarily, more so water, but they need both of those. Right. How can you say people won't have the right? They have, they have every right. They're a life. Well, it's it, it's it's provided by the planet Earth, of Mother Nature, God, or well, whatever. So it was air, but now you're paying for air at most gas stations. Oh yeah, to fill your your to put air in your tire and your tires and your. Now you're paying for air. Yeah, it's true. So it's true. I, I know. Dollar is taking place in almost every facet yeah. of life. You know, and we were we were talking the other day, uh, Bill, uh, about that new cars should have standard and air pump to fill your tires with. That should be a, a, a most important. Uh, it's not a bad idea. Run without inflated tires. They should, that should be a small compressor, standard, mandatory in all vehicles, in the trunk. And it's there. Yeah, why the hell should... Some of these people, especially women, the elderly, getting a flat at night, coming home from wherever, bingo or what have you, they can't change a tire. Granted, a, a compressor won't work for everything. Yes, if you have a blowout, it won't work. But if, it, if you have a flat tire, a small leak, it'll at least get you out. Why? Get you home or get you to a gas right. station. What? Uh, what? And why should you have to wait an hour for the AAA man to come just to an fill? Hour. That's just, well, sometimes that's just, you're lucky. <laughs> just to fill. Just to fill. hours, James. Many pieces I know of. Oh boy. So, yeah, ju like I was saying, just to fill your tire to wait for the AAA guy well, to I'm show up. I'm going to give you an example. A friend of mine years ago, 
Coming home for a club in New York after work. In New York City, a very, very bad area of New York City. He got a flat tire. He said, Billy, in an area, at that hour especially, you don't want to be a white man. He said, I did not want to be changing a tire. Fortunately, he had an air compressor. Pumped it up and got out of there. Right. And That's you know, true. Especially, he said people were yelling at him. He said, I've got to get out of here. I think he said, you know, so there's one example of how it possibly saved him from getting beaten, robbed, mugged, what have you. There, there, killed, who knows? There's, he pumped it up and there's got a, out of there. There's a situ there's a situation where uh, uh, it's good to carry a firearm, you know, in that situation, you know. Um, Firearms are great. I love guns. I'm very good with a gun, but I think guns so often people panic and they use them in the wrong manner. Yeah. Well, if you're in a bad neighborhood and people are shouting things at you and you have a flat tire, uh, well, you know. Yeah, but sometimes people fire too quickly. They panic. They get scared. Yeah, well, uh, the, some some areas the cops don't even want to go in. I hear there's one part one part of Philadelphia that the yeah, cops I mean, don't even like going in. Your police and you don't want to go to police the area. I mean, really, come yeah. on, what have we become? You know, what but we become, it's just, uh, but getting uh, getting getting back to the CEO, uh, uh, it's like oh, anything. Like it's like anything else. Money can be used for good or it can be used for evil. A laser beam, a laser beam could be used for surgery to help people, or you can use it as a weapon. It's right same thing. Wrong, same as a gun. Right same uh, same as a gun. But what right what I'm wrong. getting at is what I'm getting at is a corporation can be led by people that are honest and sincere and want to, and think long term, not short term, and want to do positive things with their company. But it can also be led by evil, greedy people. Wicked, greedy, like no. this CEO of but Nestle's. You have so much poor leadership in many corporations and in much of politics, too. It's, I don't know why some of these people when given power do the things they do. As we've said before, we've asked, how much more do you need to eat? How many more cars do you need? Blah, blah, blah. It goes on and on. It's just pure greed, and I don't understand why. Why do they need more? Especially when you see some of these people, especially politics and CEOs, some are up there in their years. How much longer do you really think you have? How much more do you need? Can't so take it are you with doing you. This? Hey, why don't you want to see your people happy? Hey, caskets don't have co uh, pockets. I don't get it. I don't. I have never understood what. It's very odd what money can do to how it can corrupt people. Hey. You leave. You leave this world. You leave this world exactly what you, how you came into it, and no, no matter how rich you are, you're gonna leave the same way you came in. Well, in essence, you never ever really own anything. You're like you said. You're basically borrowing everything because you, leave, you come in with nothing. You leave with nothing. So you're only borrowing, borrowing whatever you have for the time you, you are alive. If you think about it. Take it all with you. Yeah, that that is true. Now we were we uh, um, Dr. Bill read a, a, a very fascinating bit of new information. Did you know, Bill Morrow, that um, they they are attempting to grow with stem cells to grow beef for hamburgers in a laboratory? Yeah, they that, already that, grew it. Go, they, they already did it. They already the did it. They're not good. The it, tastes. The taste tests. It, good. it tastes like cake. It, it doesn't taste like like a like a normal hamburger, like ground beef. It tastes like cake. Well, it's going to be hard. You really have to duplicate fat. Fat is what gives meat its flavor. True. Well. Very true. Very true. So you know they're trying so many different things. Some but it's, it's some don't. I, I, mean, I, I call know, it. And plus, it doesn't look very appetizing. It looks like ground up cat food squished together. Yeah. It looks like uh, like a uh, 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 you ever see chicken loaf or or or, or turkey yeah, loaf? It just, it just doesn't look enticing. Or or uh, Arby's the the beef yeah. that the so-called beef that Arby's uses. It, it's all pressed meat together, and God knows what else is in there. Well, I think it's like anything else. The bottom line, the best way to put it, a burger has to look like a burger. Right. Yeah, that's it. 
That looks like a burger. That still looks like a burger. You a can't. So a boycott. Finally ground and perfect. Listen. You know? Once, once so something. The surface around are hand being hand forth, not pressed by some machine. Once something well, is, once something is ground up into a pate and and pressed together, it could be right. anything, and that includes hot dogs. You know, well, I mean. Let me interrupt you. You used the perfect word. That was the word I was looking for. It looked like a pate finely ground up and mashed together into a form. You're right. That's not good. You know, the place where I go in this area, the area where I live, makes a burger. It's made by hand. The thing is far from perfectly formed, and it looks and tastes just great. There's, there's nothing like the... I had no machine, nothing. Help me, Scott. You know? Help me, Kirk. There's nothing like the real thing, baby. Remember that song? There's nothing like the real thing. Like the real thing. Oh yeah. There's That's nothing true. like the real thing. That is true. But well, the other old saying, in many ways, the old ways are best. You can't modernize and change everything. It no. Work. Some things don't. Work. Some things with uh, with time do not. Are not meant to get better or change. They're they're exactly. just they're just perfect the way they are. That's right. Machines can't do everything. Sometimes some of your best restaurants today uh, still do things by hand. What they, was it? They, they could buy what was that thing all called on Star Trek that the made the food no. and the drinks and everything? I don't know. I, press I don't know. I forget what it was called. Uh, uh, yeah, like uh, like Star Trek had the, uh, the 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 cafeteria. You press certain buttons and it created food for you. <laughs> I mean, you can't no, you can't synthetically duplicate well, Mother I Nature. Well, remember, Jimmy, you might be a little you're younger than me. You may not remember there was talk in the '60s of any meal, steak, burger, whatever you could take in capsule form that would fill you up. up, up. What is that? Part of the art of eating is the chewing, the taste, the flavor, not just sucking down a little capsule. It's true, 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 true. They don't get it. Right. Everything has to be futuristic. Hey, I mean. Well, it will not work. I mean, spiral, spirulina and algae, uh, spirulina, algaes, uh, 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 yeah, like a, a kelp. Uh, well, no, seaweeds have have flavor. No, don't fool yourself. I mean, like like algae, like chlorella, spirulina. They're they're the food of the of the the past, present, and future. But you gotta have solid food. To, I mean, you can't you can't be happy sort of well, drinking right. soil and green for the rest of your life. Food. It's not just. It's not just stuff in your gut, it's the, the pleasure that you're doing from me, you know, chewing. And I don't know how to put that on people. Stuff in your gut is not everything. You know, it's the pleasure of eating. Yeah, I was just imitating steer, a cattle run. It's, it's sad what people are trying to do, but unfortunately you still have a... I think the best party is opposed to all of this, a lot of well, opposed you know, That's good. That's you, good. you know when stem cell research does a lot of good and is a godsend? When you're growing limbs or organs needed by human beings that need it. Well, you do. You, we, 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 it's a weird correlation, but we're becoming more like bugs. You yeah. can replace a lost limb, a, a diseased, injured, cancerous, whatever organ. We can't, well, we can do a little bit now. You can't grow it yet, but they grow. So to me personally, I, I'm all for it. Lord. They grow. They they grow. Transplant people. Now you don't need organs for the people. You got cancer. Your heart's, uh, dollar, heart's horrible. You will grow you. We can make one of your own DNA. Yeah. What what about uh, putting putting your brain into an android like like Lee Majors, he's a million dollar man? <laughs> well, it's, you know, things are going to be headed that way too. I mean, they're doing things with. Uh, I guess he might stay cryogenic freezing, who knows? Yeah, like Mr. Freeze did to his to wife on Batman. The they find a cure for what killed you or what have you or what you closed yeah, you. Uh, 
all, all your friends and relatives will probably be dead by then. Well, I think things are moving fast. Yeah. I hope they move in the right direction, the proper direction to help people. But they, I just don't like the quote you gave before about the Tesla CEO saying, what was it, water is only for the, what was it? Where people do not have a right to drinking people water. People have a right to drink. That, I just don't like that, that statement. That is not good. It's not true. It's not, uh, it's not human. Something like that. It's it's like saying it's like saying like what you said before. It's like saying you don't have a right to life itself. Yeah. This Nestle guy is saying I'll be judge and jury who lives and who dies. Yeah. That's not the way it is. Yeah. Um, That's not the way it should be. That that is not the way life should be. Well, there, well, well, the flight. People, older people, everybody. Mm -hmm. There's no age limit. People have a right to water. People have a right to happiness. It's all. No, people should not be suffering like as they are worldwide. It's just sad. It's a big problem. Uh, so many problems, which gives us a lot of topics for weeks, to, weeks, months, and years to come. But it's sad what's going on. If you have at least have a heart, you'll think it's sad. Well, they don't. They uh, they don't have a heart. I don't care. I'll who cares? Let them die. They're third world country. Who cares? Don't think like that. You see, greed. These are human beings. These are lives. Greed is like a, a, a idolatry. It's their god. Money is their god. So they don't care. They're so obsessed with it, with greed. They don't have a heart and compassion and empathy. Well, they're going to have to answer someday to someone. Well, it's going to bite them on the ass, Billy. Yeah. Look, I. I strongly believe in karma that what goes around does come around. Well, you ever hear of the term Gaia? You know, the forces of Mother Nature, the Earth getting revenge? Gaia, they well, call it? I think it seems tragedies, natural occurrences are increasing, they're getting worse and worse. Mom Nature is fighting back. She's PO'd, it sure, sure seems like. Uh, That's true. She just can't keep taking advantage of things and, and raping the land ripping the land for profit. Destruction comes back to bite you. It always will, it always has. We've got to stop destroying. We destroy yeah. animals. Look how they, real quick that I have to go, gentlemen, but look how they, they kill healthy elephants just for the tusk, for the ivory. That's look great. They kill the rhinoceros just for the horn. For the horn. Because I think it's used as a, an aphrodisiac or something. Yeah. Leave the rest of the body to rot. I mean, this is not right. Things like this have got to come to a stop. And yeah. the, the people just to pick a few bucks and these jump over. All right, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Did you know that there is now, that now the shark is in, endangered worldwide because the, chi because the, you? listen, the Chinese are harvesting the sharks for their fins to make shark fin fins soup. Fins in their cartilage. The cartilage, yeah, the fins, and uh, it's, it's become a sought after. It's, uh, anything to destroy for the temporary, short term, buck. Long term, they don't see what's going to happen. The big picture. No, no, they don't. They don't. They don't see no, that. No. Well, it I heard. Never I, seems to wake up until it's too late. And even then, when it's too late, you tell them, and they go, "Oh, well, I didn't know." Oh, well, you did know. I shot. You were warned. You were told. You just didn't care cared about that dollar at the time. Yes. Well, I got to run, gentlemen. Yeah. I, I just want to say, say, say that you had a great meeting with Ken Create. It was good. Very enjoyable. It went well, and I, I think we uh, we have a, our idea has a, has a promising future. You know it would be cool? If, if we all rehearsed with your friend, uh, T uh, Tony Saxon, entertainer Tony Saxon. Tony Saxon is a great entertainer. We yeah, all, all of us. We can all. I can bring the the African drum. Ken can bring his props. Uh, you. Sure on, fellas. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, give give him a call. Let's do it. I will do so, gentlemen. Make it so. Make it so. Make all it right, so. Gentlemen. Okay, Until sir. Sweet guys, you have a good rest of your show. So long. Thank you. Bye bye. All right, fellas. Bye bye. Bye. Gotta love him, man. Gotta love him, but man, when he says. It's, Excuse, excuse me. I don't mean to interrupt you. <laughs> Either, he might as well not even say that. <laughs> Waste of time. He might as well just interrupt. interrupt. Me.
because he, he it's very hard to take control well it's because of the, of the show uh, huh it's because of the phone he, he can't hear us as well as he should if he were in the same room so that the uh, delay and etc doesn't so, get through so the uh the banter is more efficient when you can hear the other party loud and clear. Yeah. Maybe that's the reason. Maybe that's the reason. Okay. It's okay. a sad... Yes. ...given that most of the coverage of the film Lovelace... What do you mean, Linda Lovelace? A film... Ouch about the star of pornographic hit The Deep Throat It's Linda Lovelace, right? is going to be full of verbal snickers and dirty puns Of course Making the actress and her life just another dirty joke Well, you, once, you, once you're typecast you're stuck And it's not funny it well, never was. Well, it's 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 not funny to the person who's trying to break out of the typecasting. Linda Lovelace, born Linda Borman, yeah, was always a controversial figure, and this movie, there have already been two, with one more still to come, avoids too much of that but it has a pair of terrific performances at its center and an intriguing story and unless you've read Linda Lovelace's own book Ordeal it's not the story you may be expecting directed by Rob Epstein and Jeffrey Friedman the mostly non-fiction filmmakers whose Previous credits include the Times of Harvey Milk, Harvey Milk, and the Celluloid Closet. The movie has a curious and not particularly successful structure. It starts after a brief prologue at the beginning, following Borman from her time as a nice girl living at home with her very Catholic parents. Ah, may, hey, now we're getting somewhere. She had a cath she had Catholic parents, which meant they were, meant they were probably overly strict with her. And to her romance and marriage to a sleazy promoter named Chuck Trainer. And, and she, I think she did it out of spite for her overbearing, uh, controlling parents. I think, I think it was rebellious. It was rebellious. Uh, girls always do that when, uh, you know, when they become, you know, bitchy little teenagers that won't listen to their parents, and their parents are, you know, you know, uh, issue a lot of uh, tough love, and they rebel. To her introduction, at his urging into the world of porn films. So the boyfriend, the sleazebag boyfriend, introduced her to porn. And um, I'm sure her parents probably uh, fainted. Then it skips ahead six years to show Lovelace taking a lie detector test and preparing to write 